So, which then leads me to Lisa Ann uh, Fanning, who is going to do the what's up for us this month. Lisa Ann? Yeah, I'm just trying to find. There we go. Oops. Can you see that? We can. Excellent. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Okay. So what's up in the sky? I hope I can do it justice uh, the way that uh, Dave Hoskin does it. But um, uh, so I woke up this morning with my allergies like clockwork. So I know it's October. That's how I knew. <laughs> uh, this, for the sun this month. Uh, really happy to see that uh, we are getting much more darkness. Um, for those of us who don't like to stay up too late, who appreciate our sleep and have to get up early in the morning for work, uh, at least we can start to do some of our imaging and observing uh, earlier. Um, so today, sunset will be at 6.54 p.m. with dusk end at 8.31. As we get to the end of the month, uh, we're looking at sunset at 6.04 and dusk end at 7.43 p.m. So uh, by the end of the month, we uh, end up with 10 and a half hours of darkness. For the moon this month, uh, first quarter, uh, this is the Wicca Wee Goose for, uh, cycle of, of phase of phase of the moon. Um, so we hit first quarter on October 4th. October 5th, we have the moon and Saturn is four degrees north of the moon. So a good opportunity there to see the two together. On October 8th, uh, Jupiter is three degrees north of the moon. October 9th is the full moon. Um, and then October 12th is the moon in Pleiades, where Pleiades will be three degrees north of the moon. So um, a nice opportunity there to, to try and capture those two together. Uh, October 14th, moon and Mars. We have Mars three degrees south of the moon. On October 17th, the last quarter moon. Um, and then October 21st to the 22nd is the Orionid meteor shower peak. Uh, which is just prior to the new moon on October 25th. And uh, that is the Keptika Wigus, river freezing over moon. Um, and then I would be remiss if I didn't mention that tonight is uh, International Cloud Night in New Jersey and the rest of the world, it is International Observe the Moon Night. Um, so uh, you can go to moon.nasa.gov, observe the moon night and see some of the opportunities there. Um, I did get an email from NASA, so I think much of the, much of the East Coast, at least, is going to be weathered out. I know we're getting the remnants of uh, of Ian, but uh, so NASA was looking for uh, folks who were willing to run virtual tours of the moon. So you could still participate um, just behind the screen tonight if you're uh, if you're weathered out. So take a look at that website. So here's what I mentioned for October 12th. Uh, this is at 10 p.m. Uh, there is Pleiades just north of the moon. Um, so that's a, that's a great opportunity. I think, uh, think I'll be trying that challenge. Hopefully I have good weather. And then taking a look at the moon. Um, the moon, this is the moon in Explore the Universe. So uh, some of the craters that, uh, that you'll wanna take a look for uh, in, in Explore the Universe as well as Explore the Moon. Uh, we have the, the challenges, um, those 12 craters are listed in, in those challenges for those programs. So uh, first quarter is always a great opportunity to take a look at those craters, um, uh, many of which appear on the first quarter moon uh, in good relief. And then uh, the Mare are listed there as well. So October 2nd through the 6th should be best opportunity um, to see many of these features for those programs. All right, let's take a look at the planets this month. So Mercury is very low in the pre-dawn sky, difficult to see after mid-October. Um, it reaches greatest Western elongation um, of 18 degrees on October 8th. Um, Venus is currently too close to the sun to be visible, um, but the good news, Mars rises before midnight and brightens to magnitude negative uh, 1.2 by month's end. Uh, it is close to the moon, as I mentioned, on October 14th. The next opposition of Mars is December 2022. 
Uh, this is a good time for zodiacal light. It's visible in the eastern sky before the morning twilight starting uh, in October. And uh, Jupiter will be visible throughout the night all month long, magnitude negative 2.9, close to the moon on October 8th. I know a lot of people have been out there um, imaging Jupiter. Uh, the other night I was out there and, and got a great look at uh, three of the moons that formed a, almost a triangle just, just by Jupiter and uh, also got to see the great red spot. So that was exciting. Um, Saturn is rising before sunset. Uh, it's well placed in the evening uh, for evening observing throughout the month. So take a look at Saturn as well. Um, Uranus is visible for most of the night. It's at magnitude 5.6. It's also close to the moon on the evening of October 11th and after uh, midnight later on in the month. And then Neptune is visible for, for most of the night, magnitude 7.8. So you'll need some bigger optics there. Uh, that's my current challenge personally. Um, here's uh, some, some other challenges that David has issued. October 11th at 11 p.m. Um, here is the challenge of Uranus uh, just below the moon. And then zodiacal light, October 23rd to the 31st before dawn. Uh, this is a good period of time for that. Okay, um, so we have uh, algal or, or, or beta persei. Um, October 10th, it's at minimum um, at 8.41 p.m. And then it brightens uh, through October 11th at 12.11 uh, a.m. So uh, another one of David's uh, challenge challenges issued here. And then if you're doing the Explore the Universe uh, program, the autumn constellations that you'll have an opportunity to view, uh, Pegasus, Andromeda, Cassiopeia, Perseus, and Aries. So take a look for those. And then of course, the autumn stars. So the ones that are uh, indicated with an N are good for the, for the SYNSCAN Align system for navigation. Um, so you'll have uh, an opportunity if you're doing Explore the Universe to explore um, and observe Mirfak, Hamal, Alpharats, Algol, Shedar, Markab, and Sheratan. For autumn deep sky objects, uh, here is David's challenge of Milot 20. Um, or Alpha Persei, it's an open star cluster in Perseus. Um, take a look at that. And then for double stars, uh, we have Alpha 1 and Alpha 2 Capricorni. Uh, it's a wide binocular optical double. Um, Alpha 2 Cap uh, is a, uh, a yellow star and Alpha 1 Cap is a yellow supergiant. So uh, for those doing uh, Explore the Universe, looking for double stars and um, interested in double stars. And that is it. Any questions? A good month. This is my favorite month, so I'm excited. Yeah, the uh, Perseus cluster is one that I've actually observed over the past week in two different locations. It's such a glorious open cluster. Yeah, um, it, um, it really is beautiful. Great, wishing you a clear skies. Hopefully you have better better weather than we do today. <laughs> uh, I don't think we are. Uh -oh. <laughs> We're under the same cloud here, Lisa, and I think. Uh, you guys deserve a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you. You did a fabulous job on David's behalf, and I appreciate you volunteering to do this on, on his behalf. Thank you. My pleasure.